Bible says in his presence is what? And at his right hand is? Pleasure forevermore. Praise the Lord. If you're coming here for the first time, you're wondering how come these blasts are too excited. It's because we understand the indescribable measure of God's love for us. We know that without him, not just are we nothing, but that we could have also ceased to exist. So we cannot help but be appreciative. Hallelujah. All right, let's dive straight into the gospel. Thank God for that wonderful testimony. God, God is still in the business of healing. And we've seen how God, again, has disgraced cancer. This isn't the first time, and it's not going to be the last. The Bible says that Jesus was preaching somewhere, and the power of God was present to heal. So every time the saints gather, the power of God is always present to heal. So when you come into God's presence, by this I mean when you come into the garden of saints, come with expectation. Come with an open heart and believe God for something. You never go back the same way you came. It's like when you jump into a river, do you come out the same? No. Now, if you jump into a river, you don't come out soaked. There's something wrong with you. Not with the river. The river is still the same river. Praise the name of Jesus. All right, let's go straight to the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 47. I'll just read that place briefly, then move to Luke 15. Um, yep, I tell you, her sins, and there are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiving little shows only little love. So Jesus was saying with respect to the woman who came to him in tears of gratitude and appreciation and then wiping out his feet with her hair. In defending her, Jesus said she is pouring out such level of love towards me because she recognizes how much she has been forgiven. She who is forgiven much, loves much. But she who is forgiven little, in quote, loves little. And I said in the um, first two services that it's not so much of the measure of forgiveness, but measure of understanding of how much each one has been forgiven. Now, another translation buttresses that fact. The Passion Translation says, she has been forgiven of all her many sins. This is why... She has shown me such extravagant love. But those who assume, so it's an assumption, but those who assume they are very little to be forgiven will love me very little. It's like the story of those two people who, who went to God in prayer that Jesus shared. And one of them said, Jesus, God, um, I cannot even call your name. I can't even, you know, raise my head to look at you. Please have mercy on me. And then the other guy says to God, God, <laughs> You know, um, I'm just trying to fulfill righteousness, more like. You know, I fast several times in a week. You know, I'm not an idiot like that guy. Um, I'm just good. And Jesus concluded that the man who came with a sense of understanding that he needs God's mercy and that that mercy is available, that man went to him justified. But the one who didn't think that he needed anything went home just the same way he came. 
And so Jesus in that Luke 7 was basically buttressing the fact that you cannot love God beyond how much you believe God loves you. In fact, the Bible says that we love him because, because what? He first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. So you can't love God beyond the measure to which you believe that God loves you. And so that woman was pouring out some measure of love in worship. Again, love is demonstrated in worship. Love is demonstrated in worship. When you see somebody worship God, you know, profusely, worship God with all our hearts, um, all our might and whatever, it, it's born out of the place of revelation of the love of God for her or for him. It's born out of the revelation. When you see God, when you see somebody worship God in tears, that tears that are flowing is basically tears of gratitude that who am I without you? Where would I have been if not for you? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, it is the same love that is extended to your fellow man. If you don't, you know, first of all, the first step is receive God's love. And so the measure to which you receive God's love is the measure, number two, you give back to God, as it were. And then, number three, you give to your fellow man. You cannot, you know, love God beyond how much you think God loves you. And then you cannot love your fellow man beyond how much you understand the love of God for you as a person. That's why Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you are filled with, you know, anger towards your fellow man, is because you think in a way that that's God's disposition towards you. That God is angry at you. And he's always angry at you. Because, in quote, in your head, you are not as good as, you know, Pastor Lola. If only I can walk as straight as Pastor Lola. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe God will just love me a little bit more. But God's love is called agape. And agape, agape it's God's kind of love. It's the unconditional, measureless, limitless love. Give me Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 19. Ephesians 3 from verse 19. Agape love is God's, you know, limitless, immeasurable kind of love that cannot be quantified. It's unconditional. In other words, it's not premised or how good you are. Now, even when you're unkind to your neighbor, God still loves you. But it's just that the reason you are unkind is because you don't know how much God loves you. That's the problem. Hallelujah. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Give me New King James Version. New King James Version. Uh, give me verse 18 quickly. Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. So Paul was praying for the uh, uh, Ephesian church that they be rooted and grounded in love. And then what happens next? Verse 18. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height. Right? To know the love of Christ with passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. In other words, as you begin to appreciate the love of Christ, that is beyond comprehension. In other words, no matter how much you appreciate it, you can never fully comprehend it. You comprehend it in measure. So you grow in, you grow in your understanding of God's, God's love. But you can never grow to the point where you understand it all. You, you, the human mind does not have that capacity 
to understand it. You, it's, not, it's not possible to understand the, the, the width, the length, the depth, and the height of his love. You can't comprehend it. You can only comprehend it when you see him face to face. You just melt. You just, you just melt. Hallelujah. So, so, so as, as you grow in your understanding of God's love, as you grow in your measure of revelation of God's love, it begins to show in your gratitude towards God, in your appreciation, in how, how far you can go for God, what you can do for him, right? And then it will also begin to overflow in your relationship with people. In other words, you can differ with people in opinion and still love them. Are you with me? So that we have difference in opinion does not mean I, I have to hate you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That, that, that I, you don't like, as it were, in quote, in quote, or that you like who I am not close to doesn't mean I have to hate you. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So let's assume right now that, you know, um, um, in quote, I don't like Pastor Rachel. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always using her as an example. I know she can't be offended. If she gets offended, <laughs> praise the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, bet their dream, but you don't know their dream. So even if she gets offended, she's not, it's inside her stomach. Praise the name of Jesus. Okay, but I can use that as an example because of our maturity. So, so let's assume that in quote, I don't like Pastor Rachel, right? And then I see Pastor Lola and Pastor Rachel getting close. The natural tendency for the average man is I join her. Just okay, plus extra one. And once I see Pastor Branska liking her to her, I join her. So it becomes inherited offense. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The question is where do you have space for all that? Live a free life. Live a free life. Don't be yoked. Let your heart be so full of love that you, you don't have some space for, for anger, for, you know, unnecessary pain, protracted pain. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be so full of love that people have to remind you that, ah, but, but that person, remember that you were angry with her the other day, how come you are flowing? You say, oh, I can't even remember. Because yes, you have a right to be angry, but you don't have a right to allow the sun to go down on your wrath. Now, that in love doesn't mean um, everything is acceptable. No, it doesn't mean that. I, mean, I probably would, would have time to talk more about that next, next, next week with scriptures. Doesn't mean you can't get angry, but it means that you can be angry and sin not. Ephesians chapter 5, or chapter 4 rather. He said, be angry, but sin not. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When you walk in love, you, don't, you, you can't belong to any faction. Faction? What is faction? <laughs> in fact, let me even tell you. Ah, you there's a level of self-esteem you have that you are too big for any faction. <laughs> I've been through, you know, organizations, groups that we are, you know, splintered into factions. I've always been a lone ranger in the midst of the faction. Because I, I, I feel I'm how. No faction can hold me. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So, so when you are small enough to be in a faction, it shows how small you are. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. You should be so full of love that you can accommodate every faction. Faction A, Faction B, Faction C. 
And yet you are not a part of any faction. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's quickly look at, as I, this is my main point in this particular service. Luke chapter 15 from verse 11. Luke chapter 15 from verse 11. The, a, a, a story we're all familiar with. But we bring out a couple of points from it as we begin to make a landing. You know, if you're flying and then you're about to land, they tell you, go back again to your seat, fasten your seat belts. The plane is about to land. All right. To illustrate the point for that, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. Before I can come to my father and say I want my share, I must know my father enough that my father loves me enough to give me. Are you with me? Yes, sir. My father loves me enough to give me. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let, let, let me give you a practical personal example. Now, growing up, um, it took me time to understand how much my dad loved me. But as a kid, I didn't think he did, really. Um, I thought he loved my elder sister, but not me. Even as young as six, seven, I remember one day we were told to bring something from school and I didn't, you know, I didn't tell him about it. I told my sister to tell him that they asked her to bring the stuff. And so that one was pain and touch. She now went to tell my mom who now confronted my dad about it. Now, but the point I'm making is I didn't ask him because I didn't think he loved me enough to give me. It took me years later to realize that, are you kidding? You literally got everything you asked for. That's the truth. I practically got everything I asked for. But I had translated some part of my relationship with him into, you know, a general lack of love. And because that was my presumption and assumption, it limited what I could ask for and the boldness with which to ask. So this prodigal son could go to his father because he was confident in his father. He was confident in his father's love for him. Say that, <laughs> um, I, need, I need my share. Not that he labored for it. It's his father's property. But you know his father loved him enough to give him. Say, dad, give me, give me my share. Glory to God. And his father gathered his own share and gave him freely. There was no discussion. You must be so persuaded in God's love for you that you can go to him in prayer and say, dad, give me. Like I went to him in prayer this morning when I saw the cloud gathering. I said, no, 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 no. Cloud, move to the forest. Now, let me, do you want to know what I, I said in prayer? Do you want to know? I said, cloud, you will shift. I know you have gathered and you want to fall, but you will not mess up the service. All through today, you will not fall. Now, go to the forest where the bandits are scattered their camp. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, bother looking at the weather um, forecast. I didn't at all. I just knew it was going to be so. Has it not been so? It's it born, <laughs> it born out of a love relationship. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And I, I, can, I, I can't imagine what would have happened today. How those people have run, been running helter skelter. They wouldn't know where it came from. Praise the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I made a request. His father grants him the request. Then let's jump to verse 17. When he finally came to his senses, the issue was there was that 
He got a request, but he didn't have enough wisdom to manage it. Are you with me? So it's, it's one thing to understand how much God loves you. It's another thing to, uh, to have the wisdom to also manage the byproduct of that love. And this guy didn't have that wisdom. And so he messed it all up. And then he began to suffer and suffer to the point where he was desiring to eat the food that pigs ate, but nobody could give him. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the higher servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. In other words, even in that fallen state, he still remembered the father's law. That the father is so loving that even servants, he takes care of them. Yes. Oh, how this, how, this, how this revelation of love will change your life if you understand how much your father in heaven loves you as much as this prodigal son understood his father's love for him. It will change every single thing about your life. He said, even the servants, my, my own dad takes care of them. They have more than enough to eat and to even give others. And here I am, suffering unnecessarily. And what was the next step? He said, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and, and you. And I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Glory to God. Uh, he, an acknowledgement of his condition. This is where I am. I'm so messed up, no longer worthy. You know, in Genesis chapter, chapter 3, God called Abra, uh, Adam. Adam, where are you? The, that question was not a question of location, but of position. It wasn't that God didn't know where it was because God is omnipresent. God is present everywhere. Everywhere. But God wanted Adam to identify his position. These are these where God had placed him. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I'm no longer wanting to be called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields walking. When he returned home, he heard music. That's verse 25 now. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants, what was going on? Your brother is back. He was told. And your father has killed the fatted cow. We are celebrating because of his safe return. And guess what happened? The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in was angry and wouldn't go in body language. Number no, back you. Angry and I wouldn't talk to you. Angry and I wouldn't attend your party. Why don't, why won't you? Did he invite me? But he invited everybody. But yes, did, did he send me an invite? Was angry and wouldn't go in. Anger. Why was he angry? Why? Who can tell me why this guy was angry? Why was he angry? Why was he angry? Talk to me, somebody. Huh? He felt his body in his habit. Okay, that is a primary answer, primary school answer. What? If he his father love his brother and him, okay, that, that's like secondary school. <laughs> that's back to primary school. <laughs> eh? That is university. <laughs> he had not internalized the father's love for him. So it was not so much that he was he was not angry with the younger brother, just like that. It wasn't his younger brother. Even though his anger, you know, bottled up, displayed or flowed also towards his younger brother. But his real problem was not his younger brother. His real problem was inside. He had not internalized his father's love towards him. 
He had to internalize it. Hallelujah. So, so, so it boils down again to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 7. He who is forgiven more, lost much. He who assumes that he's forgiven little, forgives little. In other words, he who assumes that he loves, he's loved little, loves little. If I assume that I'm loved little, I will love little. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. This guy assumed that he was not loved. That's why he was angry at everybody. Anger, anger everywhere, anger everywhere. Listen, stop saying why are people always offending me? It's not people, it's you. It's you. Why is everybody always making me angry? Ah, you got to be smarter than that. You you pass primary school and secondary school, you are still saying that kind of thing. Why are people offending me? Are you that touchy? The real issue is inside. You haven't internalized the father's love for you. And then he said the older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. Malice, envy, you find it all here. Bitterness. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, all these years I have slaved for you. In other words, ah, ah, ah. He, he considered his service slavery. <laughs> he wasn't born out of a love relationship. He considered his slavery. Uh, uh, I'm, always, I'm always the one. But every time you hear yourself say, I'm, I'm always the one, I'm always the one, I'm always the one. There's a problem. There's a problem. Because whatever you do, you should do it born out of love. So you don't even remember who is not doing anything. And sometimes it starts by people whispering to your ears. Why are you always the one they are sending? Ah, tell them shut up. Oh. Shut up. If you want to remain my friend. Because they are trying to pull you away from the zone of love. They are trying to pull you into something else. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. All these years I have slaved for you. And never once refused to do a single thing that you told me to do. In other words... Dad, you have been unfair. You have been unjust. All these years I've been working hard. No, at no time have I disobeyed you. So his obedience was also not based on love. It was based on what he could get. Only. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. He was coming to church hoping to receive something. That, that, that's, that's why he's coming to church. That's why... Suddenly some books are coming to church. Why don't you? Eh, eh, I've been going to that church since when I needed help. They didn't help me. When I wanted to do a contract, I, want, I asked for a, a two million naira loan and nobody gave me. Why didn't you bring gun? Yes. Sometimes you have to tell some people the hard truth. Stop crying like a baby. You need feeding bottle. I mean, who, who, nobody owes you anything. Don't you understand? You should be the one giving. So if you ask somebody for help, the person doesn't help you. Do you know that somebody is wearing a ni wearing nice suit does not mean he has money saved somewhere? The person has just decided, you know what? I'm not going to look like my condition. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. But you want to look like your condition. I want them to look like their condition. But they are saying, no way. I am better than this. I will not look like where I'm coming from. I will not even look like where I am. I will look like where I'm going to. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he says, oh, I, Okay, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing. You told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat. 
for a feast with my friend. So, 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 so. <laughs> Pastor Andrew, this brother, he wanted something, but he was acting like he didn't want. So instead of asking, he was hinting. And there's nowhere in the Bible where the Bible says, hint and you shall receive. He said, ask and you shall receive. So he was hinting God. God, you see, I'm slaving. God, you see, I'm slaving. I'm slaving. I'm slaving. I'm slaving. I'm slaving. God, you see, I'm slaving. I'm slaving, no, I'm slaving. Somebody else comes and says, I've got joy like a river, joy like a river. And then, and then after that, worship, the person say, God, um, I think I need a new job. I want a new job. And then the following week, she gets a new job. And then, brother, elder brother, here's our testimony. Say, God, you are fair. You're unfair. You're unfair. Is it not that sister? Don't you know her? And don't you know me? Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hello. You've got to know who you are. You are an offspring of the Most High God. You are a seed of Abraham. You are a child of the king. Your father owns the world. <laughs> hey! Hello! Don't try to shrink yourself in order to accommodate other people's doubts. Don't try to shrink yourself to accommodate people's low self-esteem. That they feel intimidated doesn't mean you should shrink. Like some people say, that church, ah, I, I, I. the reason I've not come to that church is that that church, they are always shining. You know, I heard it so much that at a time I'm wondering, ah, what does it people want us to do? Should I not come to the platform and say, please, when you are coming to church, don't wear any good clothes. Too. Make sure you dress, you down dress. No makeup. Okay. No makeup. When you are coming to church, just look haggard so that we can accommodate. You are a child of the king. You are a child of the king. You are a child of the king. You are a seed of Abraham. Don't apologize. Don't apologize about your understanding of the extravagance of God's love for you. Praise the name of Jesus. The guy said, you never gave me a goat for a feast with my friends. He said, and yet when this son of yours comes back. Who is that son of yours? His brother. His brother. He's now saying, when my brother comes back. Say, when this son of yours, you can tell when envy is speaking. Nobody will come and tell you, I envy that girl. I, I, I'm jealous of her. No, but you can tell when envy is speaking. You can tell when jealousy is speaking. Even me as a pastor, there are some reports I get from certain people about certain people. I know that this report is not genuine. It's coming from the place of envy. From the place of jealousy. So I put it in one corner. Glory to God. The person is waiting. I'm waiting for pastor to act. Nala. Because the motive was impure. Therefore, that allegation is disqualified. The individual is discharged and acquitted. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Yet when the son of yours comes back, 
after squandering your money. <laughs> okay, okay. Is it your money? Is it your money? Now your money. Ask your neighbor. Now your money. After squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fatted calf. After squandering your money on prostitutes, you now begin to celebrate him by killing the fatted calf. The reason is because God doesn't judge the way man judges. God doesn't judge the way man judges. Hallelujah. That's why you, why you are expecting some people to go down and keep going down, they are going up. And you are wondering, God, what's happening? There is something they know that you don't know. Hey! There is something they know that you don't know. They understand the extravagance of the love of God. Listen, your envy cannot bring them down. Nobody's envy can bring you down. Nobody's jealousy can bring you down. Because God will not consult them to promote you. And then I, I learned with this. His father said to him, Look, dear son. In other words, in spite of your stupidity, you are dear to me. In spite of your lousiness, you are dear to me. So I am speaking to the elder brothers here this morning. I, I, I don't want to assume that, you know, there might be one or two or three elder brothers here. He says, he said, look, dear son, so, so you are still dear to God. You are still dear to God. Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me. I acknowledge. But there's something you don't know. And everything I have is yours. This is a missing factor, my dear son. You didn't know how much I loved you. I've watched you for many years, wondering when will you wake up. Now, it took your, your younger brother who squandered the wealth I gave him. It took him coming back to inherit more wealth for you to finally wake up. Sometimes God, can, God will use you to provoke others. Glory to Jesus. He said, elder brother, all that I have is yours. God loves you. Regardless of who you are, whether you are the prodigal son or you are the elder brother, God loves you. So, but you see, the difference is if you don't acknowledge it, if you don't understand it, you cannot experience it. You can't walk in it. You walk in the reality of God's love to the measure of your revelation. So the missing factor is understand it. Now, this elder brother, if you understood how much his father loved him, do you know, if he comes back and he hears that his brother is back, he will scream. He will almost tear his shirt in excitement. Ah! And in tears, he will embrace him and weep. They will both weep and cry on each other's shoulder. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. You are finally back. Oh God, I'm grateful. Thank you for bringing back my brother. I'm grateful. Thank you so much. And he will be more excited than his dad. He'd be more excited if he knew how much his dad loved him. So now do you know how much God loves you? Now do you now see that there is no reason to envy anybody? Now do you understand that there is no basis to be angry with anyone? There is no basis to be bitter with anyone. There is no basis to walk in offense towards anyone. That offense is premised on diminishing revelation of God's love for you. Now you know better. So if you are offended at anybody, it's time to let love spread. Let love flow from you to their hearts. There's somebody you need to call, call them immediately after service. 
There's somebody you need to send a message to, send a message. For some other people, you don't need to tell them anything. Just give them a hug. They will understand. Praise the name of Jesus. For some other people, just buy them a gift. Gift is one of the loudest love languages. Buy them a gift. They will understand what you are communicating. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Because there's, no, there's really no need. This life is too short to live in bitterness. What's, what's the maybe 100, 120 years? I don't want to live to 120 years. Why should I live 120 years? 90 something is good enough for me. So that, you know, when I'm still strong and vibrating on the pulpit at 90 something. And then one day I come to the service at 90 something and tell the people, all right, so we'll see you again. And they won't understand. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I, I've started it out with God. And then on that morning, I tell, I tell the folks, you know, my great-grandchildren and everybody, all right, God, let me bless you. And then discuss the blessing. And I say, till we see you again. They won't understand. Grandpa, yeah, we're coming tomorrow. Just smile. And then at night, go to bed with a smile on your face. <laughs> and then you let, you let go. <whistles> and then the following morning, Grandpa, Grandpa, how are you? Great Grandpa, how are you? <laughs> That's the kind of life I'm going to live. Oh my God. This is born out of my revelation of his love for me. That he answers all my prayer. Yes. But somebody believe, you know, anybody can die anytime. Ah! 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 Anything can happen to anybody. Ah! 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 Allah magic. This, this life is full of suffering. Ah! The Bible says, it says, walk away from a fool when you do not perceive wisdom. Why? Because foolishness is contaminating. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now do something for me this morning. Walk up to five people. Five is the number of grace. Give them a, a warm heart. Tell them, I love you dearly. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. You're amazing. You're amazing. Yeah. You make my life feel brand new. Yeah. 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 Yeah.